agree with me. Now, you look at Canada. You had a crackpot prime minister years ago, Pierre Trudeau, who was nothing more than a, le a liberal playboy. He was a laughing stock. He destroyed the economy of Canada while he ran around doing as many women as he could. Basically, that was Trudeau's legacy. Drug, sex, rock and roll, and ruining the economy with high taxation and regulation. Now he has an idiot son, a good-looking idiot son, who has good abs, and because of the good abs and the tattoo, the morons in Canada elected him. Now, of course, if you study it, it wasn't the morons in Canada who elected Trudeau. It was the Muslims who had been brought in to Toronto who swung, swung the election in favor of Trudeau, the idiot. Trudeau the Quisling, as idiotic as he is, is a power-mad idiot, much along the lines of all the liberals in the West, who will do anything. They'll burn their own nation to the ground to hold on to power. Take a look at Germany. Merkel will burn Germany to the ground rather than let go of the reins of power. So sh instead of listening to the people, the majority of whom say enough is enough, we can't take it, you're destroying our borders, language, and culture in Germany, what does Merkel do? She says, drop dead. I'll do what I want to do. She'll bring in any number of Muslims from Syria who will never integrate into Germany. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows that from the police to the priests to the teachers. Everybody knows that that will never, ever be an assimilation in Germany, ever. So why is Merkel doing it? Why is Trudeau doing it? Why is Obama doing it? They're psychopaths. They would burn their own nations to the ground to hold on to power. Do you understand that there are people who are sick, who are running things? Do you get that, that there are people who are maniacs? I don't think you understand it because this is something new to history. And I'll have to explain it in more detail right here on The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. All the fences. Basically, he's given a green light to the third world to run over our nation. Barack Obama, Merkel, you name it, Trudeau and Canada now are committing a reversal of what Hitler did. Yeah, I'll bring up Hitler over and over again to attract your attention. He, they're just as equally psychopathic, but instead of invading other nations, they're invading their own nation. I'll keep repeating this theme today till you get it. Hitler was a psychopath, a madman. He brought his nation to ruin. What did he do? He invaded other nations to impose the Germanic Nazi view upon surrounding nations. Then he wanted to take over the world. What is Obama, Merkel, Trudeau doing? They're invading their own nation with the third world to annihilate their own nation's borders, language, and culture. They're equally psychopathic, and they're doing it for the same exact reasons, which is to hold on to power. Power uber alles. You get it? Now, what are Western values post-Obama? Western civilization reached its apex in the United States of America, the freest, most prosperous, and most powerful nation in the history of the world. That civilization was built upon principles derived from English common law and tradition, Judeo-Christian morality, and the uniquely American principles of individualism and self-reliance. But what are Western values today? Shooting junk at night and taking a coffee enema in the morning? Sleeping with 15 people at night and doing an herbal bath cleansing routine the next day? Making sure you're vegan? Are those our values now? Is this why everyone is into detoxing? Because they know that their souls are polluted? Here we are 50 years after the 1960s when we were told to eliminate all repression. To let it all hang out. That if it feels good, do it. Why don't we do it in the road? Can anyone really say that that has worked out well? We, we hear a lot about how repressed American society was before the 1960s, but not much about how much more well-ordered and civilized it might have been. John Adams famously said that our Constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. He was right. There has always been a protection against any federal government-mandated religion in this country, as there should be. But religion or some equivalent moral set of principles is a responsibility that goes along with freedom. We can see the consequences of abandoning that responsibility all around us. Americans barely notice as a rogue president runs roughshod over the Constitution. 
takes over the health care system, floods the nation with illegal aliens, alienates our allies overseas. As long as the beer is flowing, football is available three nights a week, and porn is available 24-7, they'll stay fat, dumb, and happy. I mean, it would be very hard-pressed to answer whether the United States is still a land of opportunity or a land of dependency. One in eight Americans are receiving food stamp assistance. Over one-third of Americans have government-subsidized health insurance. We have two opposing forces fighting in the world right now for dominance. We have the extremely fanatical religious Muslim fanatics who interpret their religion from a ninth century point of view and are willing to kill for it. They'll kill boys for watching soccer, believing that watching soccer is the first step on a slippery slope to becoming transgendered. That is how insane these fanatics are. The West is exactly the opposite. It has no values left. The left destroyed the church. They've destroyed all semblance of religion and morality. They've destroyed the American principles of private property, free enterprise, self-reliance, and personal responsibility. They've replaced them with atheism, hedonism, dependency, and political correctness. Man in the West, has, man in the West today has no soul. Pages 154 to 156 of the most seminal book of your generation, Government Zero, my last in the series. That's it, my last chance. Now, in the last segment, I said we've lost the battle, and people are calling like crazy, saying things such as, Richard on WBAP, go ahead. You're on the Savage Nation. Make your point, please. God bless you, Michael. I don't believe that you've thrown up your hands. You're the best voice of what's going on. Well, Richard, I think I think I should have clarified. Richard, you're right for calling me up on that statement, but notice what I said. I said we've lost the battle. Did I say we've lost the war? Very good. We haven't lost the war. Did I say we lost the war, but we lost this battle? And That's that is correct. because the most brilliant political science commander in American history is running their war for them. With the most powerful will I've seen in my lifetime, a single-minded maniac, a psychopath in the White House, has destroyed virtually everything I just mentioned on this program. But we haven't lost the war. The war has just begun. Because 30 million to 40 million Americans have finally awakened to what the psychopath has done to this country, and they want to stop him from doing more. They want to stop him before it's too late. Am I wrong about that, or am I right about that? You're right about that. Well, we know that it's not Paul Lyon Ryan who's going to stop him. I named him that last night on my Facebook account, Paul Lyon Ryan. Isn't it astonishing that Harry Reid supports him, Barbara Boxer supports him, Barack Obama supports him, John Boehner supports him? What more do you need to know than what I told you when Ryan appeared on the stage? And by the way, I was the first one. Remember when they, they ushered him out of nowhere to run with Mitt, weak-willed Romney? Remember that? When, me, when, when Mitt... Milk Toast Romney was running. Remember when they floated Paul Ryan, what I said? He's a nobody. He's a quizzling. Watch out for him. I was the only one who saw right through Paul Ryan. Thanks for calling. Copy of Government Zero goes out to you. Why? Because I said we've lost the battle. But did I say we've lost the war? The answer is no. Because I have a program, a plan to save America. And I'm not going to read it to you now. But I have an entire chapter on saving a nation. And there's a chapter, and there are points on how to save the nation. There is a plan. There's a battle plan in the book. It's not just fluff. It's not like most books that end with nothing other than a screed and a scream. I have a plan. I have a plan that begins. I'll, I'll start with a few of them. 40 Actions to Save America. And it runs from page 313 right to the end of the book. 40 actions to save America. I've given you the top 40 that come to my mind as most urgent in 2015-16. And I want you to note that not all of these uh, actions have to do with the federal government. Some should be accomplished at the state or local levels. Some should be accomplished outside of any governments at all. There is much that we can do in the private sector with the choices we make and the power we have over those who want to influence those choices, we have tremendous power. 40 actions to save America. One, start a nationalist party. I don't mean for 2016. Start a nationalist party. Two, close the borders completely for seven years. Three, deport all illegal aliens in American prisons. Make sure that when you quote me, you add the American prisons. Four, repeal the anchor babies law. 
Five, make English the official language of the United States. Six, require government-issued ID to vote. Seven, reintroduce civics classes to elementary and secondary schools. Eight, restore to active duty all military officers purged by Obama. Offer them a generous bonus as an incentive to return. Nine, restore physical standards in the military. Ten, restructure military spending. Eleven, cut the rest of government significantly. Twelve, repair our relations with Russia. And that's all I'm going to say. I'm giving you 12 of the 40 points, 40 actions to save America. You can read the rest of them yourself by reading Government Zero. Actions, actions, actions speak louder than words, words, words. Can you name one Republican candidate who actually has 40 actions to save America? I don't know of any. Even Donald Trump, who I strongly support, I haven't heard 40 actions to save America. I'm sure I could write them for him. I'm sure his staff has already gotten a copy of my book. I hope so, because there's gold in there. There's enough gold in, in Government Zero for Mr. Trump to run right to the presidency with. And when he does win, we might just be able to convince the people around them to save the country by instituting those 40 actions to save America. We just might be able to do it. I don't know, though. I don't know what's going to happen. The problem is once somebody wins, they have to run a country. And to run a country, they have to hire people. And once they hire people, you don't know what you're going to get. You know, people are very deceptive to get a job. You get it? Look what we did when we put the Republicans in power uh, during the last election. And I count myself as one of the most important influencers on uh, getting the Republican power back. I remember when, when Stop the Coming Civil War came out. I went on the air exactly a year ago, and I begged you to vote. I said, most of you won't vote. You're diehard conservatives. You're fed up with the Republican Party. And I said, hold your noses and please go out and vote. There was, yes, it was a low turnout comparatively, but there was a very high turnout amongst conservatives. You don't know that. That's something that the boys on CNN haven't figured out yet. The conservative turnout in the last election was extremely high because of my book, Stop the Coming Civil War. And I said, after we put the Republicans back in power, we're going to lobby them to do what we want done. Well, we lobbied them and we got the opposite. They stabbed us in the back. The Quislings, Boehner, McConnell, etc. Ryan put him in the pack. They stabbed us in the back. They cut the conservative heart out. So when Trump wins, there's no guarantee that he's going to appoint people who will actually act out what the people have been screaming for. We have no idea what might happen right now. So that's all I want to say from my point of view. And there's one other little, uh, shall I say, technical note that I must mention on this beautiful day, on this great program right now, which is that on Amazon, my book is number one in politics, social sciences. This is very interesting. Government Zero has been driven up to number one in books under politics and social sciences. And yet Amazon is doing it to me again. If you actually click the politics and social sciences, they don't list my book. They don't show it. They make it number 20. So the liberals inside Amazon are trying to undermine me again. Remember last year, I didn't have Amazon. Remember they were in a fight with my publisher. I didn't have Amazon. Well, this year I have Amazon to sell the book on. Well, they're doing it to me again. One of the little girls or little boys inside Amazon has delisted my book from the list of politics, even though it's number one on the list. They made it number 20 or buried it. Wait until you see what happens when it hits a high point on the New York Times list and they don't list it. This time I'm going to sue them. Oh, this time I'm not rolling over. This time I got three lawyers lined up. We'll bring a lawsuit so hard on Sulzberger's girls that they won't even know what hit their, their running shoes. That's all I want to say at this time. Let's take some callers, please. WABC calls from New York City. Abby, welcome to the program. What's on your mind? Hi, you know, I totally agree with you on a lot of things you're saying. However, it's more than just Obama. It's a white Congress that has allowed illegal immigration to take over this country. It's a shame to be a heterosexual. It's a shame to be a Christian. And I'm a black American woman. And we don't like all of this immigration either. So no one's putting our voice... Abby, you know, I'm so glad you called because people say to me, where are the voices of the American, uh, the African Americans over Obama flooding America with Muslims from Syria? They are the ones who are going to be hurt the most by this. I don't understand it. How in the world can your people not see this? I, I do see it, and we do see it. Where our voices are not being heard. We are stifled. We're not giving radio time. We're not giving TV time. We are angry about this too because this negatively affects not only poor white Americans but Black Americans. 
I understand that. When you're going to bring in millions upon millions of, of destitute individuals, they have to be supported somehow, so that comes out of the existing social services.